Hi Virgo, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing really, really well. And so this reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Virgo. We'll take a look at the cards. We'll get a sense of the awareness for the week, guidance, and possible outcomes. I'll also choose a couple of oracle cards for additional information. Okay, let's get started. Okay, Virgo, in terms of awareness for the week, we have the Ten of Pentacles and we have the Three of Cups. So the Ten of Pentacles, in this illustration, you see the, the patriarch, the man uh, sitting here with the, with the gray hair, the dogs, the children, the couple. We see all the scattered pentacles and we see the beautiful home. This is a card of family legacy. It's about resources, money, property, investments, and uh, this can be an awareness for you to take care of family matters with respect to money, and maybe that's um, watching your budget, uh, checking in on the accounts, checking in with your attorney, uh, lawyer, whatever it may be on estate matters. Often we work hard to provide security and a firm foundation for our family. So it's important to tend to it, to be mindful of it, to, to make sure that it's still there. And particularly in the U.S. with the um, volatility of the stock market, it may be a good time just to touch base with your broker or to look at things and to see how you can sure up your finances. Often when we look at the Ten of Pentacles, it may include, you know, you're looking the benefit of your children, or perhaps you have elder elderly care that you have to make sure that you take care of parents uh, or grandparents. Some people may be having to make decisions about that. So with this focus on family resources here, we have the Three of Cups. And the Three of Cups, we see the three ladies raising their cups as if making a toast or a cheer. They're toasting the goodness of life, the abundance of life, the um, enjoyment of being with each other because it's nice to share times and, and discussions and listen and uh, all that good stuff when you get with your friends. And so here's an opportunity to celebrate and then listen. This is the week of New Year's Eve. Many of you have New Year's Eve plans and you'll go out there and get dressed up and do fun things and um, ring in the new year. And so here, here's the party. Here's having fun with other like-minded people. So in terms of guidance, we have the Page of Wands, we have the Knight of Pentacles. The Page of Wands, pages often are messengers or they bring an offer or they represent youth and youthful, uh, a youth, youthful perspective on life, which is this, this page wants to be able to take this wand and to do magical things with it, to have experiences, to get out and to live, to, uh, you know, have adventure, build a world of travel and of friends and of connections and of contacts. This youthful page is beginning the, the, uh, to feel the, draw, the, the, the uh, attribute of drive and ambition and of wanting to pursue passions because the wands are about your passions. The wands are about what makes you feel lively and excited. And so this can suggest that you may be taking on new projects this week. You may be interested in something new. You may be, um, you know, quenching a thirst 
for new energy within your life, with a new pastime or a new relationship, whatever it may be, you're in pursuit. And you're in pursuit of something exciting and something new. So along the lines of this youthful energy, something new, something exciting, here's the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles sits on his horse. He holds the pentacle and he looks across the fields. He's thinking, he's planning, he's plotting, he's watching, he's observing. He's taking all that information and he's going to process it and he's going to figure out the best way perhaps to till the land, to make more pentacles, to build resources. He's going to do it through hard work, through fro focus, uh, feet on the earth kind of approach, a practical, grounded, um, earthly approach, common sense, and not interested in rushing toward the finish line, but going to take time and the reward will be there if the hard work is put into it. So here we have this new, new energy, new pastime, something new, fun and exciting. Here's the Knight of Pentacles, slow and steady wins the race, devoting energy. I think the thing to think about though is that that's a, there's a lot of hard work behind this Knight of Pentacles. And it's important to have some levity. It's important to have some fun and to pursue new things and to feel action or, uh, you know, excitement over what you really want to do. So in terms of possible outcomes, we have the High Priestess and we have the Wheel of Fortune. Both cards are major arcana. So the High Priestess, she sits here with her Book of Knowledge and uh, looks quite um, serious. And there's a sense of quietness here, of stillness, of being passive, of sitting and reflecting sitting and meditating and trying to understand yourself and what lies beneath and what's bubbling and brewing below. And how do we do that? Well, we pay attention to our dreams. We pay attention to the messages that we feel, that we sense. It's our instinct. It's our hunches. It's our inner guide. And we tune in to our psychic ability. And so this week, it's a time for you to really tune in to your intuition. And maybe it's time to break out a dream journal. Maybe it's time to really think about the numbers that you see or the, the things that people say and, and make note of it and somehow work it into your own um, altar, your own way of uh, paying or working on a spiritual practice. But this is all about intuition and psychic ability as well as knowledge, understanding oneself. But sometimes below the surface, we keep some of our greatest talents hidden. We keep some of the things that really make us unique or special. We keep it to ourselves, And perhaps over after thinking about it, you may want to start to consider bringing it out into the out into the world so if you're like the greatest singer in the world but you only sing in your house you know maybe if you can find peace with it uh start to to go to open mics or something to hear to share your voice but that takes it's an inner knowledge here that takes a sense of finding comfort and peace within your own decision and following your instinct to do that. So with this high priestess of following your guide and following your intuition and, um, you know, kind of uh, letting your intuition lead, here's the wheel of fortune. 
The Wheel of Fortune is the universe's way of reminding you that there are cycles within life. And the wheel is always turning. I think just like Journey sings, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. And that is true because this wheel is movement. Things are moving. Sometimes you're on top of the wheel. It reverses. You feel like you're on the bottom of the wheel. And it's the randomness of events, of fortune. Sometimes we have good fortune. Sometimes we have not so good fortune. What's important is how you respond to it, how you react, how you are flexible or how you are able to adapt. And so this patient approach, this inner guide into intuitive approach can help you handle any changes to your routine, changes to your life that pop in that are unexpected whether they're good or whether they're not so good. It's how you respond, which is really important. So interesting cards for the week with celebrations and new opportunities to do things that are fun for you, as well as a focus on finances and again, resources, making perhaps more resources uh, solidifying your resources. Let's get a little more information from the Oracle card for the week. Bright future. Stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. I like that message. Bright future. The Wheel of Fortune smiling, perhaps, upon you. And finally, let's choose a card for love. Turn on your heart light. Allow yourself this in this moment to reflect on a time when you experienced love. So turning on your heart light, shining it on moments when you felt love, perhaps self love, love from others or family love and soak it in and absorb it. And it's a wonderful feeling. And hopefully that in turn will beam out your light to the world as well. So Virgo, this is what I have for you for the week. I hope that you found something helpful here today with this reading. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already.